Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the following limit. The limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 2n factorial and then divided by n to the power n multiplied by n factorial and then all that um, expression um, quantity raised to the power 1 divided by n. So, you know, there's a lot going on. We have factorials both from the numerator and denominator. We also have a exponent with the quantity raised to the quantity itself and taking all that inside um, expression itself that's being raised to the power one over n. It's all about just rewriting our um, inside expression in a form of a series and then analyzing what we can do with that. Rewriting, uh, of course, that it's expression itself, I already said that. Um, and then eventually, once we get to, I'd say, the last couple steps, it's actually really neat because it's gonna convert into um, something that it's actually very recognizable to the point that's using, using by definition, of course but I won't spoil too much of that because eventually we're going to get to that and I wouldn't want to ruin much of the fun. So anyway, we can just um, jump right ahead in. Okay, let's actually just define our uh, given expression. I'll just call this capital L. And let's say that's set that it's the limit as n approaches infinity of this entire given 2n factorial divided by n to the power n then times n factorial all to the power 1 divided by n. So let's actually um, take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of capital L, and that says that, okay, so let's write this as the limit first. Okay, so what are using our rules of the natural logs of um, the properties, so we have a, um, so we have a division, so what that entails is that this has to be a subtraction of natural logs, but all that expression is being taken account into the um, power of one divided by n. So that would have to mean that I would have to move that one over n to the um, front of our natural log. So here we have factorials associated. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually just gonna keep that the way it is um, with the factorial itself of that natural, of the natural log of the factorial, let's better say it. So that means that'd be the natural log of uh, 2n factorial then divided by n factorial, okay? And then now we have, it's under the division of um, n to the power n, so we have to subtract that. And then since it's the exponent n, so I'll move that to the front of the natural log. So that means this is just n then times ln of n. We're gonna observe what the expression's doing over here, but first let's actually take into um, focus on what the natural log of two n factorial divided by n factorial is doing. So I'll just call this little expression, um, we'll call this series um, capital N or sequence in other words. So we want to rewrite this expression here, but let's actually analyze like what the behavior is doing before we can actually rewrite this in a term of a series. Okay, so let's actually start with just um, the first um, the first index, um, a sub 1. Okay, so a sub 1, so if we were to plug this in, so we have the natural log of, so you see we plug 1, so it's 2 factorial, and then divided by 1 factorial, and so if we write this out, this is actually just um, ln of two, right? And let's um, write out, let's write out two more, let's write out a couple more terms, maybe two, if that works. So we have um, a sub two, so that means um, this will be four factorial and then divided by two factorial. So we use the rules of factorials, that means it's just canceling out. So this will be just left with the natural log of, um, I will multiply the product, the. I won't multiply in full in the expression, I'll just write it as a product. So in this case, this would just be three times four. Next one, we have a sub three. So if I write this out, that means I have, um, so that means that would be six factorial on the top and then three factorial on the bottom. Okay, so if we write this out, then that means I have the natural log of, um, so that'd be four times five times six. So we analyze this a little carefully. That means we have multiplication in the inside expression when we're writing out our terms, depending on the index. So we can actually form this into um, a product series for the nth um, index. So what this means is that we can generalize this and say that the sequence a sub n can be written as the natural log of the product series. So this is saying we can um, start from k is equal to one, for example, and then all the way up to our index n. And then we can write this as the natural log of n plus k. But what's actually really neat is that if you actually use your rules for the continuity for the natural log of, um, of the product series, you can actually rewrite this in a way we can actually um, use this as a summation, a partial sum, and write this in a way and set this as the partial sum. This is going from the nth 
term starting from k is equal to 1 of the natural log of n plus k. So we put this back in, we say that that's equal to a sub n, so let's go back to over here, so a sub n, and then we subtract this with our, nat with our um, n times natural log of n. So we just put this back in, so that means next we have, we just put it, we just put it back in, so this would be the partial sum k is equal to 1 of the natural log of n plus k, and then we subtract this with n ln of n, but uh, so you might be thinking to yourself, um, is there a way to rewrite this and simplify this out further? And the answer is, yes, we can. Here's something to analyze over here. Notice that, um, so I'm gonna switch back to the black. Notice that n times ln of n, we can actually write this in a form of um, a partial sum. Notice that um, we can write this as the nth term k is equal to one of ln of n, you'll notice that um, if we have to plug in with our index for k, there's nothing to plug in. So it's just every time you take each index, it's just ln of n plus ln of n, so forth. But you're doing that n times, which is equivalent to this expression here. So we can actually just replace this for this. So now that's actually really neat. And so we have that, um, we have the partial sum k is equal to one ln of n plus k then add or subtract that with the natural log or well with the partial sum of course k is equal to one of ln of n and if we just use our sums of um, series we can actually just combine this onto well not sum but our rules for the algebraic um, sums we can combine this together into one sum and so that means we have the um, partial sum of I'll put this in the um, parentheses so ln of n plus k then subtract with ln of n, but also that's equivalent to saying that if you use your rules of natural logs, that's actually just equal to um, here the partial sum. That's actually just the natural log of. That means we have n plus k divided by n as the inside expression, but we can actually simplify things further, and we say that that's actually just the natural log of one plus k divided by n. We have so now we have this, so we can just plug everything back together. So now we so far showed that ln of l is equal to just um, the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n. Then replace this inside expression with our um, partial sum. So this is just multiply with the partial sum. K is equal to one to n of the natural log of one plus K divided by n. All right, so here's where the fun part, here's the interesting part. So if you take a look closely, you actually can see that with, um, with the right with the right tools and the pieces together this actually forms the definite using by the definition of a definite integral and specifically this actually comes out to as um, we have the integral of um, from 0 to 1 of the natural log of uh, 1 plus x dx if you can um, just see for yourself when you're using the definitions of um, the definition of the definite integral, you notice that this is actually the same thing over here in terms of the limit. Okay, so now calculating this definite integral is actually easy to show because what you can do is you can actually do u substitution. So I'll let u equals one plus x. Then we say du is equal to dx. Uh, we plug in our terms. So let's see one plus x. So that means that will be ln of u. Well, actually, let's plug in our new bounds, too, for the sake of it. So let's see, plug zero here, this will be a one. Plug over here, that's a two. Um, so this is ln of u du, but that's easy to show if you actually um, use integration by parts. I'm just gonna skip the step because that's very, um, this is very easy, it's um, baby work. We're gonna have that this is actually u times uh, ln of u, and then subtract with u, and integrate from two to one, okay? So let's say we plug our bounds, we plug in our evaluated bounds, so we have two ln of two, then subtract two, then you plug one, so let's see, this will just be zero, and then minus, uh, well in this case, this will be a, a plus one, and so we have two ln of two minus one, and that's equal to ln of L. So now the last thing to do is actually just take the exponential base e to both sides and get our um, l, which is the given that we want to show. So we do this, so that means we have uh, e to ln of two minus one, and if you actually solve the work, so let's see, this will be um, ln of four 
that will just cancel out to be 4. Then e to the negative 1 is uh, 1 over e. Combine those together so you'll get that the final answer is just 4 divided by e, like so. And there we have it. It's actually a lot of things, um, very, very interesting and creative approach. Um, I, was also, I also found that, that you can actually use the Sterling approximation to um, evaluate this integral, but um, I think it's um, very, I, th I think it's um, fun to just use this method instead. I think that's just only because that I don't really know too much about the Sterling approximation, but maybe one day I'll um, do a little bit of research on that. So, um, yep, so that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.